Driving into any of these towns, you'd be hard pressed to see anything other than communities getting on with the business of living. Kids going to school, men and women heading off to work each morning, tourists browsing around, all the sights we take for granted in country towns across Australia. But if you stay a while and look closer, things aren't always so rosy. Businesses may be doing it tough. Young men and women may be finding it hard to get employment and to look after their families. The farmers have had a hard time of it. With a decade-long drought followed by devastating floods two years running and the promise of climate change just making it all worse. Not to mention the challenges of generational change, finance and the pressures of wealthy mining interests which rarely return a significant wealth dividend to the local community. Of all the problems these pressures bring with them, two of the most devastating are depression and suicide. But hang on, this is rural Australia. Those are city problems, aren't they? People out here are stoics. They're tough enough to endure anything, right? Well, there's no doubting that the people out here are hardy and they've endured floods and droughts before. The thing is, there's a limit. These days, they seem to cop the lot all at the same time. The drought and floods coexist with tight economic circumstances and the pressures from mining and the kids moving to the cities for education and work and climate change. The list goes on. It's no bloody wonder that people get a bit stressed out or depressed and just begin to wonder how they're going to make it through the next harvest or even tomorrow. They are under tremendous pressure and whatever happens with the weather, it's going to have an impact on their crops, on their, their stock. Um, they're fighting the prices all the time. Uh, the hours of work are phenomenal. And then you add on to that as well, the fact that that farm has been in that family for so long. They almost feel like they have an obligation to keep it going and keep it running. And, and when times get really tough, um, that is, is an added factor for them. There is help available for when people are finding it tough to cope emotionally. Not everywhere but enough that it's accessible. The trick is getting people to realise when they need it and then get over the shame and the stigma that we still so often associate with emotional difficulties. Blokes are often the ones who find it most difficult to admit to having troubles and then talking about it. They're meant to be tough and resilient, able to overcome the odds and protect their families, or so the story goes. Now that's not leaving out the ladies, although they supposedly find talking about problems easier than the men Women in rural communities are put through the same stressors and often have the same reactions. So in one way or another, when parts of the community suffer, the whole community suffers with them, whether they realise it or not. I think that it, it really impacts everybody. I think it has a domino effect within you know, the whole social wellbeing of our community. There are many reasons, but in this part of the world, the suicide rate amongst mature farmers is frighteningly high. Ray Brown, the Mayor of Western Downs Shire, has lost five of his mates, all close neighbours from farms surrounding his. I have five neighbours who have committed suicide. Now, that in anyone's language has got red flags written all over it. Now, my, my kids are 25 and 21, um, they don't want the farms. Now, when my child, uh, my boy was 16, I said, well, son, what do you want to do? He said, well, Dad, I'm not going to be a farmer because I see you daylight to dark work and slave and make very little money. Why do I want to go down that avenue? Now with my brother, none of our kids want to come home. We've got these properties. Succession planning, what do you do with it? There's been stories that go out there, and I know for sure this is a fact, where um, parents have actually committed suicide so their kid can have the farm. And you think, well, why'd you have to do that? Go through succession planning and try and work it out. Then you go the other way, where the parents receive the note where they've committed suicide, now you can retire mum and dad. The tragedy is that people can get help if they make that step and call one of the government or community-based organisations that are out there waiting to assist. So what can be done to help people over the hurdle of shame and stigma? What is it that will get them to make that contact? One idea that the Australasian Centre for Rural and Remote Mental Health has been running in southwestern Queensland is a roadshow aimed at getting people out of their houses, off their farms, to come together as a community. Simply watch a show by some of Australia's musical royalty. John Schumann and Hugh McDonald, both formerly of the iconic band Redgum, 
now perform with their new band, The Vagabond Crew, singing songs and telling stories while the laughter fills the night. Local service providers and community organisations set up booths and barbecues at the shows, enabling locals to access information and help in a comfortable, fun and safe environment, where the community event helps to soften the edges of shame and stigma. According to Louise Judge, just getting people out of their houses, out of that usual rut, is a big part of getting them to seek help. I know there were people there who struggled to leave the house and have struggled for years to leave the house. And there were a few of them there last night. So that's good. If they felt they could come out and get lost in the crowd and enjoy something, but feel that they belonged in the community, that's exciting. During the show, John Schumann, who penned I Was Only 19 after hearing his brother-in-law's stories of the Vietnam War and the psychological effects of that experience, drops jokes and stories in between songs. Sometimes the stories are longer than the songs, but they all have a connection back to what the community has been experiencing. That night, she asked him to go in the coal cellar to get some coal for the fire that night, and when he was in there, she locked him in. I think in all of the towns, the, the, the thing that struck me with the individual stories, some from the people themselves who came along and had a yarn, some from the mental health workers who had been dealing with those communities for a long time, and it was it was pretty clear to us that there were some, you know, a significant number of heartbreak stories. Um, but, you know, notwithstanding the heartbreak stories, um, the fact that they, they came out and, 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 and came together as a community and shared their stories and had a few laughs and listened to some songs and stuff, I thought was, you know, immensely hopeful. Because mental health and emotional welfare are always considered intangibles, the question will always be asked, how can this approach be worth as much as the money spent on clinical services? Isn't this just an ephemeral program with no measurable effect? I think this is a fantastic event in terms of just getting people out and um, letting them know that people do care about them. I think that just that, that in itself is so important that they know that someone just cares for them and that can be just the start of them getting some help. It's given us an opportunity to open some doors for some people who needed some doors opening and we need to build on it. We certainly need to build on it. We need to bring people together more often in a fun atmosphere. We have been a lot busier uh, lately and I think that's about them acknowledging that there is something that's not quite right but there is help out there that can support them to improve their lives. It brings people in to a really relaxed environment they're there to see somebody that they've only heard about before. But at the same time, they get the exposure to talking about depression and getting an understanding of how many people are affected by it. People I know value these events just to, for, um, just seeing that people are reaching out to them to help them. That's really what is important about these events. Okay, there's a lot of dollars been thrown into this, organising this event. Those dollars have been very well spent because people have been helped. For me, every nerve in my being saying it's, you know, it, it's worked and I think it will work better and harder in the future. Community leaders, service providers and people who have attended shows in the various towns through 2012 and 2013 have all expressed their appreciation for the way the shows bring people together in an informal community setting to talk about a very tough issue. I thought it was brilliant. I could sit here for a few more hours and listen to it. It was fantastic. And I didn't expect to be out here and I'm really pleased I've come out. And I hope there's more next year. People enjoyed it and uh, I think we, we left uh, uh, a bit of a catalyst, for sure. you just got to keep trying, haven't you? All different methods. After the first roadshow, people were asking for a repeat six to 12 months down the track. A follow-up consultation, if you like. It's contributed to changing the community's conversation. There's a greater awareness of mental health and 
while it's not more acceptance, more slightly more willingness to talk about mental health issues. No, we can play a few songs for them and just brighten up their evening a bit and have a bit of a barbie and it was about getting everybody together as well. So, you know, it's hugely important. A lot of people forget about these communities. There are so many people from the community who sort of worked and chipped in to, to get us out here and, and, uh, and have this evening and uh, it's really about just reminding you guys that, uh, yeah, life's tough but life goes on and, um, you know, if... Uh, we all have sort of issues sometimes um, and you need to talk about it to your mates and maybe um, go and see somebody because don't let you know depression and anxiety and all that sort of stuff ruin your, ruin your lives because there's absolutely no need for it. Shows mostly and unsurprisingly finish with John and the band performing I Was Only 19. It's one of those things a lot of people have on their bucket list, seeing John performing that song live. At the show in Kingaroy in 2013, the power of that song the trauma of mental health issues and the cathartic possibilities of the roadshow idea were all swept into high relief by the appearance on stage of a young army veteran suffering PTSD. Hearing that song had struck an emotional chord and he ran up on stage to express his pain to John and the band. Cat Krause, the indomitable backing vocalist and heartbeat of the band, took him by the hand and just let him talk. Two days later, and he was beginning to receive treatment that he'd needed and avoided for years laid for him he was just a mess absolute mess and it was the you know it was the band and the things that we were talking about and the music and you know the fact that we were going to sing you know we, we did K-San we did Safe Behind the Wire and we did and we were going to do 19 it, it clearly you know set off a lot of triggers pushed a lot of buttons interestingly I think it was a very uh, sort of instructive um, and revealing um, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, moment uh, in the tour, I, I, in lots of ways, you know, it was the last song of the last performance of the tour that demonstrated what it is we're trying to do and the worth of what it is we're trying to do. Because at the end of it, you know, we all talked to him and a lot of people came up and, 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 and offered him support and, and directed him to, to services and things. And God knows what he would have done had that not happened. So, can we quantify a dollar value in terms of improvement in the communities touched by the roadshow concept? Maybe not. But we know it started a conversation, and we know that the roadshow saved at least one young life. That's got to be worth it. It'll be alright, it'll be alright, it'll be alright in the long run.